Singapore has sent healthcare staff overseas for training in novel cancer treatments. This means equipping them to run studies on cellular therapies for patients. Sabrina Ng speaks to Dr. Ravindran Kanesavran, who chairs the Medical Oncology Division at the National Cancer Centre Singapore, and gets his view on the future of cancer care and the potential to cure the disease. The five-year cancer registry data from 88 to 92 versus the latest five-year iteration which was from 2018 to uh, 2022, there's a 90% increase in the number of patients who are 50 years and younger. So there's clearly there's a rise and this rise is even more amongst females. In fact, there's a 112% rise amongst females. I think there are a number of reasons why this is happening. Uh, definitely there's contribution of lifestyle changes, uh, the food we eat, Eat, the environment we are in. We know some of these reasons like alcohol consumption or cigarette smoking or consumption of processed food for example but many of these factors we still are learning at this point in time so we're not really clear about what these factors are hence it's sometimes unavoidable right on the other hand there are also genetic factors that are in play as well. Singapore's population is also an aging one with many seniors spending the last 10 years of their lives in poor health. Can we expect the incidence of cancer to rise in the next 10 years or so? We anticipate there'll be more cancer patients who are older in time to come and it's important for us to find ways to treat them holistically because they're going to be different from younger patients with cancer. Uh, hence, at NCC, we have a signature program called Geriatric Oncology Program, and we specifically look at how to treat older patients with cancer. You know, how to treat their comorbidities, see the number of drugs they have to take, and deal with drug-drug interactions, their mental status, their physical, functional, nutritional status. So we look at all these things. We do a, what we call a geriatric assessment. Find out what's, you know, what are areas we can optimize in order for them to tolerate their cancer treatment well and be able to live uh, as good a life as possible with cancer. Our country is also increasingly focused on novel treatments such as cell and gene therapies. What impact do you think this move could have on the cancer treatment landscape moving forward? Some of these therapies are already mainstream in terms of being standard of care for blood cancers, what we call hematological cancers. Uh, we build capacity, we send some of our staff overseas to train in running these studies and delivering you know, cellular therapies. So the future looks really bright. I think there are many, many new targeted therapies that are going to revolutionize the way uh, you know, cancer is treated and hopefully lead to not just life prolongation, maybe even cures in the future. These treatments may be groundbreaking, but they often come at a high price tag. So what do you think can be done to help lower costs and help more patients? Amongst you know, the industry players or pharmaceutical companies, they need to find ways to make the cost of conducting these trials cheaper. And I think AI is going to help in a big way, especially in drug development, because now we have better ways to do these trials at a lower cost. And now with AI, that's going to be a, a big boon in terms of cost reduction. Now, the other component would be how governments play a role in this as well. And I think Singapore did a, an important step, especially the Ministry of Health, in forming uh, a health technology assessment unit called ACE, or Agency for Care Effectiveness. Now, they engage industry players to try to bring costs down and allow for greater access to our population. So ACE came up with, uh, together with MOH, uh, the cancer drug list about three years ago. And that has brought, brought the cost of cancer care down substantially. Some of these can, uh, you know, really expensive targeted therapies have come down in price by up to 65% because of this cancer drug list. And uh, I think when you have both you know, industry and government working together, there could be you know, private government partnerships that can really bring the cost down. How important do you think will tech and AI be in the cancer treatment landscape moving forward? AI plays an uh, important role in diagnostics, uh, pathology for example, and is playing a big role in automation of uh, our workflow. Right? So that can help in terms of cost reduction and efficiency in how we deliver care. So AI is already here uh, in a big way. Now in the future, I think it's going to play a huge role in clinical assessment and diagnosis as well. It's going to be a wonderful assistant to us in delivering high quality health care. So we've invested quite a bit, especially now in data analytics, for example, predictive analytics. And that's, I think, those are areas that are going to change the future. 
Singapore has relatively lower rates of cancer screening compared to other developed countries. What do you think can be done to boost take-up rates for screenings? Healthy SG fully subsidizes cancer screening. So costs should be out of the equation. So I foresee that proportion of patients who are eligible to be screened and get their screening done will increase with time. But there are other factors as well, cultural factors, cancer being a taboo topic, you know, and people rather not know than go and find out. Although I think this is changing over time because our population is better educated now. If you screen and you diagnose cancer early, your chance of cure is really a lot higher rather than waiting for it to be diagnosed very, very late.